of that group called the elect, which are also known as the church of the firstborn in the scriptures. Firstborn meaning the first spirits created. And it would make sense the Heavenly Father would take the first spirits created to be the rulers of the nation, the aristocrat, if you will. If you know your words, the word aristocrat literally means best rule. The first spirits created are the best ones to rule. That's why Yahweh Shah is the first of the first, and he's the best of the best to rule. You know, Yahweh Shah will be ruling in the next kingdom, and right underneath him will be King David, you know? So at the end of this walk that we're going through, we're going to be lauded. We're going to be praised for our wisdom, for our tenacity that we show. As a matter of fact, the new acts of the apostles is being written now. We're going to be talked about in the kingdom. We're going to be the celebrities in the kingdom. Us that are doing this work, man. Our children are going to be reading about us. Scripture so speak about the writings of the house of Israel. The hardest walk leads to the greatest destination. <laughs> and what's our destination, brothers? The kingdom, man. The arms of Yahweh Shai, man. The scriptures tell us in the Apocrypha there's a day coming where Yahweh Shai will place crowns upon the heads of the brothers that maintain their faith in him, that believed in him. He shall place crowns upon their heads. Ezra saw that, man. Our great forefather, Ezra, saw that in the vision. We want to be part of that group, man. We want to be one of those, those individuals receiving that crown from Yahweh Shai. You know how, man, you know how great that is? I couldn't begin to possibly explain that in words. Words can't even explain the joy of that. Okay? Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. When he's tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Shalom is real. I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to whom it rightfully belongs, which is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's what you heard the brothers speaking in the beginning of this lesson. Yahweh is what the world ignorantly calls God, Jehovah, Most High. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ or Yeshua. There's no God beside them. Double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit and citations to the elect whom the Lord have given ears to hear. And um, today's lesson is going to go into the heirlooms of mercy, the elect. As you heard in the video I previously played, Yahweh Shai, right? Yahweh Shai and the elect are known as the first fruits, right? The first fruits, the church, the church of the firstborn, the remnant, all right? Essentially, they are known, um, their title is known as a priority. In other words, their priority in the eyesight of Yahweh. Okay, and you know, when you go into the word heirloom, this is a piece of property such as a deed or charter that descends to the heir as an inseparable part of an inheritance of real property. It's just something of special value handed down from one generation to another. And as we understand, or you should understand reincarnation, the elect right from one generation to another every time they came on this earth they were given a special gift of faith 
All right. They were the ones to remind Israel of the glory of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, according to the book of Ephesians, the second chapter in the eighth verse, it says that faith is a gift from the Heavenly Father. Right? And we know that according to Hebrews 11 and 2, by faith the elders have obtained a good report. So it says, something of special value handed down from one generation to another. So, Again, proving that faith is of special value because not many have it. A variety of plant that has originated under cultivation and that has survived for several generations, usually due to the efforts of private individuals. Right? And again, that represents the elect, the heirlooms, right? The first fruits, the firstborn, the church. Of the firstborn. This is the book of Revelation. Chapter 14. Verse 4. Verse 3. Start at the top actually. And I looked, Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion. And with him in 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Right? Because one thing about the elect, they always going to glorify the father. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters. And as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne, and before the beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the 144,000. Alright, again, a special gift. Right? It says something of special value handed from one generation to another. Now that new that word new right there means kind of, meaning refresh. Because for the most part, or for the majority, you know, this word, the understanding thereof, the truth of this word, right, Yahawashai, was not known. All right. But through Yahawashai and the men whom he's chosen, whom he had passed down, right? He had prayed to receive when you read John the 17th chapter. Now understanding can commence in this generation, in these last days. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000. So you're talking to me 144,000 out of what, 8 billion? I would say that's a precious amount of people. Very precious, which were redeemed from the earth. These are they. Well, let's let's it says which were redeemed from the earth. All right, because when it's all said and done, the elect will be redeemed out of the judgment to come. It tells us in the next chapter how the elect was they didn't receive, they didn't serve. Let me just grab it, Salakia. Revelation 15 and 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten a victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on a sea of glass, meaning the outer firmament, the he the the outer heavens, as we know today as space, having the harps of God. And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and of the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Again, serving, praising Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah as they have done on this earth. Just and true are thy ways, 
thou king of saints, who should not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. All right, so what were redeemed from the earth? Hey, Yahweh Shai prayed for these men. This is um John chapter 17. Bear with me. Let me start at verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. But for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine. And all mine are thine. And all thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world. Right. So. You know point. Of verse 9. Specifically. Tells us the instructions of Yahweh to go to a select few men, the 144,000, to give them this gift, to give them this word. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I am come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Right? And you're going to see. At various points where the elect has always kept sacred the name of Yahweh. Remember, Yahweh Shai, when he even prayed, you know, he taught the disciples to pray. The first thing they said was, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So his name is very, very, very important. Which is Yahweh. All right. Yahweh coming in the name Yahweh Shai. While I was with them in the world, I have kept them in thy name. Those thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. Right? Judas Iscariot. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. This word. And I have given them the word, thy word, and the world hateth them. Because they are not of the world, even as not I am not of the world. I pray that thou shouldest. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. In a point of revelation where it says that these are come out of the world, because the final plagues is going to hit this place. All right, and those plagues are are meant to destroy the wicked. Right. So again, in the, in the end thereof, they will be kept from that final evil judgment meant for the, the, the evil. Remember, it tells us in Isaiah, the first chapter, the ninth verse, that the Lord. Isaiah, chapter one, verse nine. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We shall have been as Sodom and we shall have been like unto Gomorrah. And remember, out of Sodom and Gomorrah came Lot. All right. The scriptures call Lot a righteous man. All right. You know he was praying to you. How about Shimei? I was shot to get the fuck out of that place. All right. So it says, um. Where were we? Oh, right, Salaki. Let's go back to Revelation 14, verse 5. Oh, these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and the Lamb, and to the Lamb. As a matter of fact, there was one more point I wanted to bring out in regards to being redeemed from among men, from among the wicked, essentially. 
This is Second Ezra chapter 9. Verse 20. I'll start at 19. But then everyone obeyed. But now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted by perpetual seed and by a law which is unsearchable rid themselves. Also in the book of Ezra it speaks on how Adam, because he sinned, you know, followed the ways of um, the serpent, which is a man, by the way. Right. After his lineage. All right. Or all those that came thereafter. <laughs> fell off because of their iniquities. So I considered the world. And behold. There was peril because of the devices that were coming to it. All right. Pretty much rebellion. By way of the philosophies of these other nations. And I saw and spared it greatly. And I've kept me a grape of a cluster of the cluster. And a plant of a great people. All right. So here it is. You got this whole cesspool of wickedness. However, there's a pretty much like a spiritual force field over the minds of those that the Lord would keep the elect. It says, and a plant of a great people. Let the multitude perish then which were born in vain. And let my grape be kept and my plant for with it. For with great labor have I made it perfect. All right. And at the judgment of the wicked, the grape will be kept. All right. Again, also proven that they are heirlooms, the elect, because this is what a variety of plant that has originated under cultivation and that has survived for several generations. All right. So essentially, as the Lord brought uh, damnation into the wicked, all right, as the Lord, you know, jacked his own people up, he always kept the remnant for himself. Remember in the book of Romans, I believe it was Romans, how the Lord told uh, Elijah that he had, well, it was, it was in the book of Romans, but he was recounting the book of uh, Kings when the Lord told Elijah he had, you know, um, pretty much hid prophets set was it seven thousand prophets that have not bowed the knee to Baal right so this is a special group right here man and if we are part of that group words can't explain right remember even the scriptures say that is not a man that will have but if the most high that show of mercy so some he handpicked for himself and others he picked you know, to be destroyed with the rest of the world. The scriptures say, um, it says, and then their mouth, right? We read verse four. These were redeemed from among men, from among the wicked, being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Oh, and I skipped that point, Salakia. It says, these are they which were defiled with women, for they are vir which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. And when you go into the scriptures, a woman could also represent um, philosophies. You know, the elect had women. As a matter of fact, to prove that, the apostle Paul, he said, you know, I have forsaken my wife, my children, what shall I receive? So that just goes to prove you prove to you that the elect men had women you know certain of their disciples had women right we know king david the apple of the lord's eye he had women so it's not necessarily talking about physically physical women but of philosophies it tells us that in proverbs the seventh chapter but um let's go to wisdom of solomon chapter i think it was three and fourteen 
It says, Blessed is the defiled, which with his hands have wrought no iniquity. I'm sorry, blessed is the eunuch, right? Which a eunuch is a man that doesn't deal with women, which we already addressed that point. Which with his hands have wrought no iniquity, nor imagine wicked things against God. All right, because these other false philosophies, they pretty much teach rebellion against the one and true God of Israel, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. For unto him shall be given the special gift of faith. That's a spirit. Call Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Because I, I glanced over this when I was, you know, meditating upon his lesson, but I never read the whole thing. Right? So again, the special gift of faith. The heirlooms of, of mercy and an inheritance in the temple of the Lord more acceptable to his mind. I want to read it again. <laughs> this, this is this is this is um good news right here, man. Blessed is the eunuch, which with his hands have wrought no iniquity, nor imagined wicked things against God. Right? And for the multitude. At one point or another, they imagine, imagine wickedness against the Heavenly Father. Right? Except the elect. Hey, read the book of Job to prove, you can prove that. For unto him shall be given the special gift of faith and an inheritance in the temple of the Lord more acceptable unto his mind. For glorious is the fruit of good labors. And the fruit and the root of wisdom shall never fall away. Right? So yeah, man, heirlooms, heirs, right? It's just something of special value handed down from one generation to another. And their works are written for us today. You know? The works that they did thousands of years ago, you know, the Lord handpicked these men to be written in the book of remembrance for us today. Now, I looked it up. It says, uh, how precious are heirlooms? Heirlooms are considered precious because of their deep sentimental value. Often holding significant memories and stories from past generations within the family, making them more valuable for the emotional connection than their monetary worth alone. While some heirlooms might have high market value due to their material or age, their true precious, their true preciousness lies in the family history they represent. All right. And we know we 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 know of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. By various men who came back today. Right? You know, they hey, they came back and stood in their lot. As they've always done. Remember, Daniel's 12 and 13. The Lord especially told Daniel that he was standing in his lot in the last days. Right? And for Daniel, it had to be for all. So now let me jump to um Malachi 3 verse 16. And check this out. So lock here. The Lord's promise of mercy. <laughs> It says, then those who feared the Lord spake often, spake with each other, and the Lord listened to what they said, and his presence, a scroll of remembrance was written to record the names of those who feared him and always thought about the honor of his name. Again, Revelation 14, as we read, John 17, they will be my people, says the Lord of heaven's armies. On the day when they act in judgment, they will be my own special treasure. 
I will spare them as a father spares an obedient child. Then you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. All right. The elect were always kept. No matter what captivity came through, they were always kept. The scriptures also speak of how they should be heirs of salvation. I think that's Hebrews. Right. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13. But to which of the angels say he at any time sit on the sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Are not they all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them? Who shall be heirs of salvation. Right. And they will. Again. We just read various precepts. Of how they will be kept. Right. You know. Their works of faith. What they showed toward Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. This is. um. So rock 49. Verse 1. Before I read that, I just want to see if there's any more meat on here. All right, so it says key points about heirlooms, emotional connection. The primary value of an heirloom is the memories and stories attached to it, connecting current generations to ancestors. Ooh. Hey, um, the act of our forefathers is written. It's written for us today. It tells us in um Romans 14. Romans 14, no, 15. For whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and confidence of the scriptures might have hope. Right? So, you know, even in today's, um, even in today's time, you know, you always use you always use the uh, alumni, if you will. You always use students from the past, you know, to make a, a point as well, you know, as far as their diligence or their works is concerned to the previous or to the current generation. You know, I think about like a Carmelo Anthony or, you know, just greats. Like, let's, let's look, let's use basketball, for example. You know, when those, um, Let's say you go to a, let's say you're a great basketball player, you know, like Carmelo, you know, he went to Syracuse or I said uh, Dwayne Wade. I, I don't know what school he went to, but nevertheless, the point stands of how, you know, they make it, they go to the NBA and they retire or probably throughout their career, you know, they'll put their jersey up in that particular uh, college stadium that they played for. All right. And then, you know, a lot of times. What will happen is, you know, you can, what will happen is somebody will make like a, a video of their college highlights, you know, to prove how nice they always was, you know? So the current students at that, at that college can have someone to look up to and to learn from this person's diligence and their play. All right. So there's no difference with the elect. And it says... And hey, that's heavy too. Connecting current generations to ancestors. You know, a conduit. You know, the elect are conduits. All right, connecting. Connecting. You know, Israel to their power. <clears throat> family history heirloom serves as tangible reminders of a family's lineage. We read that in Malachi 3. How the Lord gave them a book of remembrance. Those that speak often one to another, the Lord heard it and made a book of remembrance. All right. And that's the prophets. They, 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 you know, they wrote epistles one to another. And in these epistles, of course, always giving praises to Yahweh in their epistles. All right. They reminded, you know, their epistles were pretty much like learning lessons um, 
to that current generation. When you read through the New Testament, help all the scriptures, they're pretty much learning lessons to that generation. You know, of the Acts of their forefathers, a uh, Acts the seventh chapter. All right, as a point of learning, again, as a point of, uh, as a point of reference to find out how far they've fallen, you know, they would always go back to their forefathers. You know, it says um, various precepts. I'm thinking of also was that First Maccabees the second chapter, when Mattathias. He specifically told his sons, he said to think upon the acts of their forefathers. Let me grab that because that's a good example. It says, um, first Maccabees, I think it's two and 65. Here we go. First Maccabees two and 49. Now, when the time drew near that Mattathias should die, he said unto his sons, Now have pride and rebuke God in strength in the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation. Now, therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So shall ye receive great honor in an everlasting name. Do you go. Hebrews 11 and 2. I don't know if I quoted it, but I'll quote it again. It speaks on how the elders have retained a good report through their faith. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 49, verse 1. The remembrance of Josias is like the composition of the perfume that is made by the art of the apothecary. It is sweet as honey in all mouths. And as music at a banquet of wine. You know. So their works. What's that? It's a rock 30. Which speaks about how you have a dad. Who might have passed away. But through the works. And through the mannerisms of his son. It's like he's still around. So it says. He behaved himself uprightly in the conversion of the people. Mm. Right? Through his acts, you know, the people learn righteousness. Remember, various, various examples all throughout the scriptures. Uh, 2 Maccabees, the sixth chapter. You had um, our forefather, um, I believe it's Elias, if I'm not mistaken. But pretty much he thought within himself. When he um could have saved his life, you know, and faking to eat some pork. But he was saying how he's an older man. Let me see. I'll just grab it. Second Maccabees six and twenty-four. Ooh, twenty-three. But he began to consider discreetly, and as became his age, and the excellency of his ancient years, and the honor of his great head, whereon was come, and his most honest education from a child, or rather the holy law made and given by God. Therefore he answered accordingly. And willed them straight ways to send him to the grave. For it becometh not our age, said he, in any wise to dissemble. Whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, being fourscore years old and ten. So he was ninety years old at the time. Were now gone to a strange religion. And so they, through mine hypocrisy and desire to live a little time and a moment longer. Should be deceived by me. And I get a stain to mine old age and, it, and make it abominable. All right. For though 
for this present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men. Yet should not, I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. Wherefore now manfully changing his life, I will shew myself such as one as my age requireth, and leaving a notable example to such as be able to be young, to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws. And when he had said these words, immediately he went to the torment. So now when we go back to Sirach 49 and 2. Now you can have a better example, a better understanding of what it says. It says, and he behaved himself uprightly in the conversion of the people and took away the abominations of iniquity. Right? Remember, it was through the acts. It's through the acts of the uh, prophets. Where our people were to follow and to do right by the Lord. Right, the prophets were a big, you know, they were very big um, as far as kingdoms were concerned back in the ancient times. Just look, just read the book of Daniel, the book of Ezekiel. He directed his heart unto the Lord, and in the time of the ungodly, he established the worship of God. All except David and Ezekias and Josias were defective, for they forsook the law of the Most High. Even the king of Judah failed. The kings of Judah failed. Therefore he gave their powers unto others. And their glory to a strange nation. They burnt the chosen city of the sanctuary. And made the streets desolate. According to the prophecy of Jeremiah. For they entreated him evil. Who nevertheless was a prophet. Sanctified in his mother's womb that he might root out and afflict and destroy that he might build up also and plant. It was Ezekiel who saw the glorious vision which was shewed him upon the chariot of the cherubim, cherubims. For he made mention of the enemies under the figure of rain and directed them that were that went right. And of the twelve prophets let the memorial and of the twelve prophets. Let the memorial be blessed and let their bones flourish again out of their place. For they comforted Jacob and delivered them by assured hope. Right. So as you see, there's a long list of men who held it down for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So it says, um. So I'll end it there. Whew, hold up, hold up. Let's 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 read this. Family heirlooms take countless shapes and sizes, but they are precious because they hold stories and memories from the past about the lives of loved ones who are no longer around. They speak truth, roots, personality, and connection where even a cherished photograph can fall short you know and um hey one thing about the apostles and elders of great millstone you can say what you want but they always you know um kept the memory of their elders alive the elder Arya, masha yaikwa abba bivens i believe even the elder apostle Gabar, he has um Pictures of Elder uh, Yaikwab and Masha, I believe, on his uh, YouTube handle. You know? So, yeah, man. Lord willing, you I can edify. Shalom to the elect. Of that group called the elect, which are also known as the church of the firstborn in the scriptures. Firstborn meaning the first spirits created. And it would make sense to Heavenly Father.